basic thing though, um, which I think a lot of spearmen don't do a good job of, is if Solazar is the guy directly in front of me in the enemy shield wall, he's not going to be my target. I'm going to be trying to kill this guy and this guy. And this is an 8 foot spear and I usually fight with my 10. So even with my 10 foot spear, I can kill this guy and I can kill that guy. So I have about five people that I can kill in the shield wall pretty effectively. Not everyone's going to pay attention to Yeah. You. And these two guys are going to pay attention to me a lot less than Solazar is. And the two guys next to them are going to pay attention to me even less than he is. So that's one of the main reasons you want to kill those four guys, not Solazar. So if you're, if you're, we're going to do it, if we're going to kind of combine a jackhammer and a single shot style here. So I'm going to be jackhammering Solazar. And I'm not going to be paying attention to Solazar, really, because he's probably not going to attack me unless he's a really superior shield fighter and he's really ballsy. So I'm really, I'm hitting here just to make people think I'm going to kill him. And then I'm going to wait for one of the, the shield men next to him to throw a shot. And so I'll hit here and then come through and hit the side of that guy. And this is where you're going to get most of your kills at Ragnarok because there's going to be a lot of people to choose from and a lot of people don't know how to fight against spearmen and they don't know how to watch him. And so th this is like the bulk of my kills at Ragnarok is these type of shots. And when you have a 10 or 12 foot spear, you can really just go crazy and hit people two or three all the way down there. And if somebody even like maybe five people over comes and charges your line, you can hit them as they come across, but you have to step ahead of the shield wall, so it's kind of dangerous. So when you're fighting with other shield men, you always want to fight with shield men that know how to fight with spearmen because there's a lot of spear or a lot of shield men that don't know how to fight with spearmen at Ragnarok. So you got to make sure you're at least with aggressive shield fighters or shield fighters who know how to fight with spearmen. I don't know why there's so many shield fighters that don't know how to fight with spearmen effectively, but there's a lot of them out at Ragnarok. And so if you can't like if you can find a good shield fighter like maybe one from your home realm or a couple guys that you know you've seen at Ragnarok that are good fighters, try to team up with them as much as you can because you're going to keep them alive longer and they're going to keep you alive longer, so it's going to be mutually beneficial. And the reason you want aggressive shield fighters is a lot of times you'll overextend yourself and throw a bad shot, and somebody's going to grab the top of your spear, and you might be able to pull that guy onto the ground. But if Solazar is a weak shield fighter, he's just going to stand there and be too afraid to kill this guy that's laying there face down. But if Solaz Solazar, I know, is an aggressive shield fighter, I'm going to pull this guy to the ground, Solazar is going to be on top of him, that guy's going to be dead, and then I'm going to be back up to protect Solazar before he gets back into the line. So it's going to work really good for both of us. And in the event that you have bad shield fighters with you, with this happens all the time at Ragnarok, this is not a good way to make friends. But what I usually do is, I'm going to step in a little bit. You know, if, I've, if Solazar is not really being smart, you know, I'm going to push him where I want him. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. And I, I know he's going to live better here, and we're going to get more kills together. So you push him around where you want And it's not a real friendly thing to do, but it works really well. Yeah, and like if, if I see souls are spacing out, or maybe really focusing on the guy in front of him, you know, I'm, as a spearman, I'm going to be watching more of the archers in airborne. So, you know, if I see an archer focusing in on him, I'm going to move his shield to where he needs to block that arrow, or move his body, or just alert him that there's an archer that's about to kill him. So, it's, you know, it's a mutually beneficial relationship here. We're both trying to keep each other alive. is what I call, I guess, the clash, where you have one shield wall running at another, and I see a lot of spearmen do a bad job of this, and I think a lot of people disagree with me here. But at Ragnarok, when you got two forces coming together at a really fast, when, you know, we're in a line and I've got my spear down and the wall's hit, all my spear is going to do is hit some shield, it's going to get bounced to the side, or it's going to get stuck up like this. I'm not going to get any kills until people die. So... Rather than possibly injuring somebody in that situation or having my spear pinned, I always come up, I'll start the charge up here, but right before we clash, I'll bring my spear up or take a step back. And this allows the shield wall to hit, and then people die real quick, and then as the shield wall reestablishes itself, then I'll drop my spear and I'll be ready to fight. And other spearmen that don't do this generally get stuck in this big, you know, melee. They can't do anything, they lose their spear in this big, like, crush, and then they get killed or they're not effective until, you know, four or five seconds after I've already started killing people because they have to get their spear back. So when those sides hit, raise your spear, take a step back, let the shield men do their job, 
and then as the line reestablishes, plant yourself up and start your kills again.